Here we go. I got all my bones. Now the amount of bones that I've given you guys is necessary. You might not think, well, you know, I, I don't have an army to feed. But when you go to pho restaurants or Vietnamese restaurants, you'll notice that the stock is super rich, unless you go to a really bad Vietnamese restaurant, and then the pho is kind of watery because it tastes so good. The main reason that we try to have bones and meat and meat with bones and bones with marrow involved is because we want that stock to be rich. So we're not adding a lot of water. But before we do that, what we need to do is remove all the impurities from your meat. And that doesn't mean washing it. You should never wash your meat. Washing your meat actually is more dangerous than not washing your meat because when you wash your meat, germs and bacteria can spread three feet. We all know about the virus now, so we don't want to spread more germs. So washing your meat will allow any foodborne bacteria to spread within three feet and contaminate everything else you have. No washing, no meat, no time ever. So in order for us to clear and clean our meat, because we want our stock to be completely clear at the end, and this goes with any stock that you make, is we're going to put this in a pot. And we're gonna add water just to cover it. And we're going to put it on the stove on high for about 10 minutes so that all the nasty little impurities and all that scum foam is gonna float to the top. Once that happens, happens. what the hell is happens? Once that happens, we're going to drain the water, we're going to wash our meat, and we're going to clean the pot, and we're gonna stick it all back in. For those that you have slow cookers available and ready to go, you can use those also, but you'll still need this first step. And then you can put your bones and meat in after the de nasty misty frothing moment and put it on low for about eight hours in your slow cooker. But we're going to do the stove top method for now. So everyone, got your bones and your meat in your pot, go to the sink, and let's get some water and you're just covering it. That's all you're doing. Okay, okay, I've got just enough water to cover those bones. I got my stove on high. All right, so now while we're doing that, and that's on the stove, we're gonna wash it, because every stove, whether it's electric or gas, has a different level of heat. So some might be quicker, some might be lower in terms of when it's ready to go. How big should the pot be? And enough to cover, uh, put the meat in, and still have about this much space from the top. Um, at the end of the day, when we actually get the, oh, look at that. Actually, when we get the, the soup ready to go, we're never going to cover our bones more than a half inch to an inch regardless. So you don't need a deep pot. All you need is a slice of onion. This is appropriate in terms of size. And ginger. Okay, so for the ginger, what I'll do for my peeling method is ginger spoon. This is one of the easiest ways to peel ginger. I have my trash bag ready to go, and I'm just going to take the spoon and peel my ginger. This is a beautiful nub. Nub, nub, nub. Okay, you can use more ginger. You can use less ginger. This is about the approximate size of ginger that I use for the amount of bones that I've given you for stock. I'm taking both these things, and I'm going to put them in a pan, a pot pan, pot pot pan, this size, and I'm going on high. I'm looking for a super nice char. We're just gonna let that sit there, we're gonna watch it, or as I do, I smell it to know that I need to flip it over. That's going to be part of your stock base. While that's going on, we're gonna talk about the spices that you're gonna use after we clean our bones in the blanching process. And the first thing I'd like to impart on you is we all know what we like when we go to a pho restaurant, right? Generally, our stock is, again, sometimes it could be watery, sometimes it could be very nice and rich depending on where we go. It's never too rich because by the time you add your noodles, by the time you add your bean sprouts, your other herbs and your chili and your sriracha, you've taken that thickness and richness down a notch. 
So never worry about it being overly brothy. Is that even a word? Onion and ginger, two things. Only two things are charring right now in my pan. Okay, now moving on to our spices. Spices. So I have star anise. I have cinnamon stick, um, clove, and then I have black peppercorns. So these are the essential spices, aside from the ginger and aside from the onion, that you would use, found along with garlic, in it. I have a tendency to use only, for that amount, two star anise because it's super strong, about one or two cinnamon sticks. Clove is optional. If you don't and you can't find star anise, go with one or two cloves. But cloves generally are in what we call, as you know, five spice. Five spice, star anise, cinnamon, cloves, coriander. That's five spice. And there's one more spice in there, but I just, my brain just died. Um, sometimes cardamom. Ginger. Oh, there's drums in the background. Depending on the region of China will dictate what has more in it, meaning more cinnamon, more star anise, more cloves, um, and the flavors. It will never, and some will add different variables to it, like Szechuan peppercorn. So it, it all depends on what it is that you use for your five spice. Now, if you're using five spice, rule of thumb is when we're ready to add spices, I would go half a teaspoon. And as you go up in increments, you're gonna add more. Now, granted, what we're doing now with the bones is removing all the impurities, purging all the blood, et cetera, so that when you're done, your final product is a clear, clear broth. So how do you have a clear broth when you're adding brown spices, like five spice? Well, as the broth cooks, all of everything will still stick to the side of the pan. And as long as that you don't agitate it, you'll still have a relatively clear broth. Now, if you're using other dry ground spices aside from five spice, meaning that you're you, in your pantry, you have ground cardamom, ground coriander, ground um, cloves, ground cinnamon, roll of thumb, I would say less is more. Quarter spoon, teaspoon of each. You can always add more, but because they're so strong, you don't want to lose the flavor or overpower one upon the other. Coriander, the rule of thumb, is more subtle. Cinnamon is more distinct and bold. So is cloves. So you want to play with it, but you don't ever want to do too much. When in doubt, less is more, okay? Now, we're just going over ingredients still. This is my favorite noodle to use. You cannot purchase this in normal stores, sadly. And you have to purchase this in more like Ranch 99 or a different specialty Asian store. Getting rice vermicelli or rice sticks are easier found in your normal supermarket than this. I prefer this noodle in my pa because it just it has a different texture and chewy consistency. But one is not better than the other. This is just a out of the package thinner rice vermicelli. And this is a like a bun ho bun bun. Bun bun. It's a bun bun. It's a bun bun noodle. Oh bun bun noodle. You want to make sure they're a little al dente because you're adding noodles to a hot broth. And what that means is they'll continue to cook. So I always make sure they're a little underdone. For regular rice noodles, whether they're wide or thin or medium, you never ever cook them in a pot for five, 10 minutes. What you want to do and what you will do for the spa is that you will soak your noodles, your rice noodles, in hot water, and by hot water I mean from the sink, for about 15 minutes. And then you will take them out and you'll have a pot of boiling water on the stove and you will just dunk a dunk, dunk a dunk in the hot boiling water for 15 seconds and you'll pull it out. 
and that's ready to go. Ready to go. What I've done is I cheat. I have one of these by my in by my stove all the time. So I take my already soaked noodles in hot water and I just put them in the stock. 15 seconds. That's it. Super simple. All right, moving on. Taring. So I just flipped over my onion. So everyone who's on the stove right now, flip it the onion. So it'll be done in a minute. And my bones are starting to bring the schmeg. I said schmeg, sorry. Schmegma, bring the schmegma to the top. So you soon you'll have a moment where your bones are going to be ready. So moving forward quickly. Mm. This is what I like to have for my finished product. I like scallions, so I chop these for my pho. I like peppers, chili, so I have serrano. Always the limes. I like fresh mint. We also have, if you can't find the Asian basil, the purple basil, then you can go with the regular Italian basil. And I also love Cilantro. You can never have enough cilantro. That's a rule of thumb. Plus, bean sprouts. Now, if you don't have all these ingredients, that's okay. A pa is a pa is a pa is a pa. It's a pa. But you might want to add something crunchy, like raw white onions to it, so it gets that kind of yum yum texture to it. And always, of course, you need sriracha on hand just to make it look spicy. But you can add any, any type of chili that you want. Because the basics here is, in order to break a rule, you got to understand the rules. So we're going through all the basics to understand the rules, and then you can break it any way you want to. Right now, my, my, my bones are super frothy and gross, right? So these are ready to go inside the sink. We're washing them. We have our coagulator. It's going in the sink. And I'm dumping, I'm dumping the whole thing into the colander. I'm just gonna dump it, dump. At the bottom of my pan, I still got a lot of schmeg, so I'm gonna wash that as well. You wanna make sure without burning yourself and under the cold water, rinse your bones super well so that you remove any extra dried schmeg, any dry froth, any dry blood, get the impurities out. So take a time, take a time, uh, take a time, take a moment to go wash your bones for those of you who are cooking with me right now. Wash your bones, wash your pan. And if you have a slow cooker, for those of you who want to use a slow cooker, this is the moment that you're gonna wash your bones and put it directly into the slow cooker. Slow cooker versus stove top. This is where you're gonna make that decision. My pot is ready to go. Super clean on the inside, no more scum. All right, when your bones have been washed, take your time. I'm only gonna fill water up here to maybe a half inch to an inch over my bones. That's the rule of thumb. No matter how much meat you put in, you only wanna go a half an inch to an inch of water above your meat and bones. I like rich stock, so I just went just barely over a half an inch, okay? All right, now, I got that back on the stove. My onions and my ginger, super charred, it's going right into the pan. This is the moment that you're gonna decide, or if you already know, what you're using. Are you using these or are you using ground? Okay, so in goes my dried. For me, I'm a, I'm a star anise person because that's how I, I describe pho. I go with two star anise, 
I go with about one piece of the cinnamon bark. I go one clove and I do about 15 to 20 black pepper, black, black pepper. Oh, black pepper, black pepper carb. I can say that. All right, so that all goes inside there. Um, for you, everyone who's using separate spices, half a teaspoon each to a quarter teaspoon each of the dry brown spices. That's when we're gonna add that now. Add it in. Additionally, we're gonna add garlic at this time. Oh, there's the dog. So for the garlic, an easy way to get rid of the peel. Wait, we have to do the Darth Vader thing, hold on. Out of the kitchen, out of the kitchen, okay. Sorry. Now, the, the garlic, all I do is, whoop, and for me, that is the easiest way to remove the skin, right? It peels right off when you give it a little smash with a heavy glass thing. Voila! So that everything doesn't get stuck under my fingernails. So just give it a good whammy. I love garlic, so I go with literally like five to ten pieces of garlic in any stuff. Any stock that I make, so it's really totally up to you. Um, so I'm gonna go garlic. If you're using ground spices separate, I would say a quarter teaspoon to a half a teaspoon. You can always add more, but you can't take away, and you don't want to over dilute your stock. Less is more. If you're using five spice, same thing. I'd go with half or a quarter teaspoon. Nothing else, you can always add more. I'm using an electric stove. Worst and best thing ever. It trains you to be more diligent on the stove than anything else on electric stove. I go to zero, I go to one, I'm at like negative one. Right? Because we want this stock to go slow. We want to roll slow and low. We want little bubbles. We don't want simmer. We want little bubbles. It's gonna cook for six to seven to eight hours, right? We want everything to be taken from those bones and meat and put into that broth. If you have a gas stove and you're able to stack the grates up on one another, go as high as you can go with still keeping your cooking elements stable so the pot is stable and put it on as low as possible. And that way the, the flame itself, you're creating a, a non-contact element, which is a very slow cooking thing. So it's, 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 that's the best way to do this. Um, so, but if you're on electric, all the way down, just barely at one. One, just do one. And if you're on a gas stove, if you can stack those grates, stack them as high as you can go. If you only do two, fine. Take that low. Now, you're just going to keep cooking this. The only time that you're going to watch this is in every half an hour to 45 minutes to an hour. If there's any foam, you might take that out. But also, if the water drops below your original water amount, you're gonna add it, never more than the original amount. So if you're a half an inch, keep it at that half an inch mark. That's, that's your goal, always. Fish sauce will be added to the end of your pho. And by the end of your pho, I mean right before you're done, before you start to plate your food, you're gonna remove everything, meaning you're going to strain your soup. A colander or a cheesecloth, and you're going to, after about seven or eight hours, you're going to turn your whole bowl, and you're going to put this on top of another pot that can capture all the stock, and you're going to drain out everything. And that's the point where you know that you can add anything else, adjust your seasoning, add your salt. If you are a fish sauce lover, you would put in about one tablespoon of fish sauce and about a half a teaspoon of sugar. I always put that on the table, so people can add it to their own soups later. I never put it in because fish sauce is a very, as you know, overpowering salty element. So use spring. I always keep on hand the fish sauce, lime juice, sugar, garlic, and hot pepper. This I add into everything. For the extra meat that you have from the pho, what I like to do is I take the herbs, I take lettuce, and I make my own wraps. Sometimes I add more noodles to it, 
and I dip it in a fish sauce. But this is the stuff that we're going to make anyways next week when we do the Vietnamese fried sprinkles. So you'll learn how to make this then. One thing we have not covered yet. Some of you went out and bought ribeye or things like that that you wanted to add to your raw meat. That will go in the freezer 15 minutes before you're about to serve your fob and we'll take out your raw ribeye or your raw filet mignon and you're going to slice it super thin. And then after you've made pour the broth onto your noodles, you add your raw slices of soft meat onto 